Welcome back to Harbour Boxed. Did you know AMD released the Radeon RX 5600 XT almost two weeks ago now? Well, they did, and it wasn't their smoothest release ever. In fact, it was probably their rockiest yet, and that's certainly saying something. Anyway, I'm not here to pile on and give AMD a hard time. We know they messed up with that launch. What I want to try and work out is how much of an impact memory throughput has on performance. But before any of that, Today's video is sponsored by PC Case Gear, Australia's premier online PC store. Whenever I'm in the need for a product, they're the first place I turn to, and I've been a customer of theirs for years now, so I really can attest to the quality of their service. I value their broad product range, competitive pricing, customer support, and easy to navigate website. With two decades of experience, I know I can trust PC Case Gear to look after you guys as well as they look after me. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the official base spec calls for 12 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory, but a late change saw AMD increase the official OC spec to 14 gigabits per second. This has caused endless confusion amongst AIBs, reviewers, and customers. For example, MSI, they decided not to overclock the memory on their Gaming X model, instead leaving the memory at 12 gigabits per second, and then opting to overclock the cores. They will soon release a Gaming Z, or Z, for US viewers, but... We'll go with Gaming Z because that's what I'm used to saying. But anyway, a Gaming Z version which will sport 14 gigabits per second memory along with the 1750 megahertz boost clock for the cores. I expect at that point they will discontinue this Gaming X version. MSI also offers the RX 5600 XT Gaming, which operates at a max boost clock of 1600 MHz with 12 gigabits per second memory. There's also a Mech OC version, which boosts up to 1620 MHz with 12 gigabits per second memory. And then of course the base model Mech, which uses AMD's reference spec 1560 MHz for the cores and 12 gigabits per second memory. In our day one review, we showed results that represent performance for both the base model mech as well as the upcoming Gaming Z version. Today though, I wanna look at a few extra things. I wanna test the max OC spec with a range of memory speeds, including 12 and 14 gigabits per second. I'd also like to look at just how memory limited the 5600 XT is with a 15 gigabits per second overclock, as well as a heavily underclocked 10 gigabits per second configuration. And I'd also like to do this with the cores clocked at the AMD base spec, as well as the max OC spec. So all up, I'll be testing eight different 5600 XT configurations, though only a few of them will actually represent products that you can buy. So this is one of those, I suppose, for science type tests. Once again, I will be using the MSI RX 5600 XT Gaming X model for all the testing, though naturally I will be manually adjusting the core and memory frequencies. Finally, in order to test the range of frequencies that you're about to see, I did have to write soft power play tables. And then for testing, I'm using our Core i9 1900K GPU test rig, which comes clocked at 5 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. Please note, I have tested just three games at 1080p and 1440p, and this should really tell us all we need to know about memory scaling performance for the 5600 XT. First up, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order at 1080p using the higher quality settings. And let's start by looking at the base clock results, which see the 5600 XT limited to a boost clock of 1560 megahertz. And again, this is the official AMD spec. Here we see virtually no difference in performance between the 12 and 14 gigabits per second memory configurations, just a 2% increase for the average frame rate. However, dropping the memory speed to 10 gigabits per second sees a 6% reduction in performance. Not crazy given that it is a 17% reduction in throughput, but still, this is clearly a tipping point where the 5600 XT becomes memory bound at the stock clock speeds. We also see that overclocking the memory to 15 gigabits per second has no real impact on performance. Now, if we look at the max OC factory spec results for models such as MSI's Gaming X, the upcoming Z, and the Sapphire Pulse, just to name a few examples, we find slightly different results. This time we see up to a 5% increase in frame rate performance when going from 12 to 14 gigabits per second memory. And while that's certainly not a massive increase, it's more than what we got with the base core clock configurations. However, it's the 1440p resolution that provides the most interesting results. Again though, with the base core clocks, we see virtually no difference in performance between the 12, 14, and 15 gigabits per second memory configurations. However, with the cores now overclocked, we find that the 14 gigabits per second memory allows for a rather large 7.5% performance boost over the 12 gigabits per second configuration, while 15 gigabits per second memory sees a further 3% increase. So for the higher clocked models, the faster memory can certainly be of benefit. 
Moving on, here's a look at how the memory speed influences frame rate performance in Rainbow Six Siege. Again, when clocked at the base reference spec, the 5600 XT doesn't really benefit from the faster memory. The results using 12, 14, and 15 gigabits per second memory is virtually the same. Again, it's not until we underclock to 10 gigabits per second that we see a 7% drop in performance. Now, with the cores overclocked to the max OC spec, which for AIBs is 1750 megahertz, we do see quite a reasonable difference between the 12 and 14 gigabits per second memory configurations. Ultimately, we are only looking at about a 5% increase here, but that's the difference between being slower than the RTX 2060 and matching it. For what it's worth, increasing the memory speed to 15 gigabits per second only boosted performance by 2%. This time we find very similar results at 1440p. Again, at the base clocks, there's virtually no difference between 12, 14, and 15 gigabits per second memory. We again also see a 5% increase when going from 12 to 14 gigabits per second with the max factory OC spec. The World of Tanks results are quite interesting because here, memory frequency has a much larger impact on performance than core frequency. For example, going from 1560 MHz to 1750 MHz with 12 gigabits per second memory, that only improved frame rates by 12%. But going from 12 gigabits per second to 14 gigabits per second memory increased performance by 6 to 7%. That said, as we increase the resolution to 1440p, the performance trends fall back in line with what we saw previously with Rainbow Six Siege and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Here the manual overclock does basically nothing for the 5600 XT when the cores are left at the base spec. Once the cores are overclocked, the faster memory does improve performance and we see a 6% increase when going from 12 gigabits per second to 14 gigabits per second. Okay, so here's a look at the average performance across the games just tested at 1440p. The results are pretty much what you'd expect. A 6% performance gain can be seen for the factory OC spec when going from 12 to 14 gigabits per second memory. Whereas we only see a 2% increase for the 1560 MHz core configuration. What's interesting to note here is, we know AMD had to make the 5600 XT faster, and you can see by simply overclocking the memory, that wasn't going to cut it. As I just pointed out, that yields a 2% improvement. However, just overclocking the cores and leaving the memory at 12 gigabits per second only improves frame rates by 5%. Again, not enough to catch the RTX 2060. But by overclocking the cores and increasing the memory speed to 14 gigabits per second, that enables a 10% increase in performance. So this essentially means when overclocking just the cores, you're only getting half the effect. So as we showed in our day one 5600 XT review, there is quite a large difference in performance between AMD's base spec and then the max OC spec, their unofficial official maximum sort of specifications for AIBs. And yeah, it's around a 10% difference. As I noted in my day one review, you'll want to be very careful which model you purchase as $10 can be the difference between securing a base model or a fully overclocked version. Typically with these sort of graphics cards, buying the base model will see you miss out on a measly 3% performance. So quite often you are actually better off saving the $10 and then overclocking it manually if there's some decent overclocking headroom. But in this instance, spending I think what amounts to about 3.5% more, that buys you at least 10% more performance. Complicating the matter is the fact that products such as Sapphire's Pulse, which do officially support 1750 MHz for the cores and 14 gigabits per second memory, right now that product is advertised to only support 12 gigabits per second memory. And this is because the first wave of products didn't feature the VBIOS update. So while there is an update available to enable the full performance, it has to be manually applied and not all buyers are going to be aware of this. In the case of the MSI Gaming X version, you're not getting official support for 14 gigabits per second memory. So to extract that extra 5% performance, you will have to manually overclock the card or risk flashing it with an unsupported BIOS. Hopefully in about a month or two, the initial wave of 5600 XTs will be gone and then we'll only have updated models on retail shelves and then retailers hopefully will update their listings to reflect the true core and memory specifications. And then at that point, this mess will be largely behind us. But of course, there's still the trap of buying a base model that's 10% slower for just a $10 saving. Also, hopefully AMD's Radeon division has learnt their lesson and they never pull this crap again. Don't imagine they're in too much of a hurry to repeat this mess, so we should be pretty good there. As for the testing in this video, the 5600 XT, it certainly benefits from the faster 14 gigabits per second memory, so I'd be on the lookout for models that officially support that memory and are only priced about $10 over MSRP. That would be the way to go. And yeah, that is gonna do it for this video.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you want to become more involved with the Harbour and Box channel, support the work we do and just become part of our awesome community, then jump over to our Patreon page. Link is in the video description. Monthly live stream, Discord chat, Q&As. We do a heap of cool stuff. You, you can check the tiers out and work that out for yourself. We also have merch, Harbour Boxed. That's obviously what this t-shirt says. So if you're interested in any of our cool merch, again, link in the video description, you can check out our merch store. But above all else, just thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.